Salt Lake Valley residents can make the mountains disappear. It's not a magic trick, it's called inversion. Inversion is a weather phenomenon where warmer air traps colder air and pollution below it, according to the Utah Department of Environmental Quality. This lid of warm air then concentrates pollution, which often obscures the Wasatch and Ochre Mountains. Typically, this happens between November through February each winter. And according to scientists, the consequences of this trapped smog could be far worse than a hazy horizon. Inversion is a natural occurrence, but it's the buildup of particle pollution that worsens visibility during an inversion event. A recent study by Brigham Young University found that air pollution throughout the state shortens the average Utah's life expectancy by two years. The study found that such pollution, often trapped by inversions, also costs Utah's economy around $1.8 billion annually when accounting for factors like health care expenses, lost earning potential, and loss of tourism. Dr. Kevin Perry, an associate professor of atmospheric science at the University of Utah, puts it this way, quote, we primarily have particle pollution here in the wintertime, and when you breathe in those particles, a lot of those particles will end up going into your lungs, unquote. Breathing in this polluted air can contribute to heart disease, preterm births, gastrointestinal problems, and an increased risk of stroke, Perry said. Particle pollution also has been linked to aggravated asthma, decreased lung function, and increased respiratory symptoms such as coughing or difficulty breathing. So what's causing all that pollution? Transportation emissions account for about 48% of PM2.5 pollution in a local inversion event. That includes emissions from vehicles, planes, trains, and other mobile sources. Smaller stationary sources like wood burning and home heating account for 39% of PM2.5 emissions during a typical inversion. Emissions from larger industrial facilities account for about 13%. Bo Call says, quote, The biggest kind of misinformation that I see is that it's all major industry, and it really isn't. Since cars are the biggest single problem, doing whatever we can to drive newer cars that pollute less, good hybrid cars, electric cars, that's all going to be great." Unquote. Inversions are experienced all over the western U.S., but levels of particle pollution are worse in some places than in others. Bokal says, quote, If you go up into other parts of the state in the mountains where they have valleys, they have inversions just the same. It's just there's not as many people there, or any people there, so there's no pollution that kicks in." Unquote. He continued to say, the pollution is not driving the inversions, the inversions are driving the pollution. So how do we stop the smog? The DEQ recommends individuals use public transit, carpool or bike to reduce emissions during inversion days, and when driving can't be avoided, tier three gasoline, a cleaner fuel that's available at gas stations across the state can also help reduce pollution. Heather Holmes says, quote, what's really critical to reducing the air pollution during the inversion is not putting pollution into the atmosphere. That's why you get things like the warning signs on the highway to drive less and carpool, because if you aren't driving, then you're not putting the pollutants into the air that then stick around because the inversion is here, unquote. Since inversion is a meteorological phenomenon, it can't be avoided, but people can avoid exacerbating the effects pollution tend to have during inversion days, at least until another storm clears out the haze and makes the mountains reappear.